Hello, world. What is up? Welcome to Build. I'm your host, Matt Forte, and we are here live at the Build Studio in New York City. One dollar is a mystery set in a small Rust Belt town in post-recession America where a $1 bill changing hands connects a group of characters involved in a shocking multiple murder. Caught in the middle of it all is Garrett Trimmer, a single father struggling to make ends meet working at the local steel mill who finds himself suddenly wrapped up in some really, really bad business. Episodes drop every Thursday on CBS All Access, so you've got just enough time to sign up, binge, and catch up, which you should, because uh, you get hooked on this one pretty easily. Here to tell us all about the show is Garrett Drimmer himself, the great Philip Edinger's in the house. How about that, guys? What do you think? What do you think about Philip? Yeah. I know you're a fan. Uh, we're going to bring him out in just a second. Before we do, I believe we're going to take a quick look at a trailer for the show. So first, let's go ahead and run that clip. So, uh, what's the problem? Hours have to be cut. Hours or money? Bringing money into a place makes that place better. We love having little Carrie here. But hey, days next week. I want what you owe me. At least let me take you out on a real date before you break my heart. Some days I think this place is about to die. Other days I think something is really about to happen here. Here you go. Are you serious? He's not homeless. Kid lives over on Maple. Oh my god, I am so sorry. What the... Jesus. What is it? Some kind of murder at the mill. A robbery. No guns, no body. Got something special. You want me to shut down the mill? Cops are unpopular enough without taking bread out of people's mouths. It bring me to the store. This thing, it won't cost none of a penny. Promise you that. I'm a detective, that's all I am. Even if I wasn't working a case, I'd still want to know what was what. None of this gets chased back to us, right? Insulted you'd even ask. I ain't keen on taking sides in some white man tough war. <laughs> gotten more information from the lab. It appears that there are seven different kinds of blood from seven different people. We're all doomed. <laughs> Damn. All right, guys, put your hands together. Make some noise. Philip Edinger's in the house right here. Philip. Uh, that is a damn good trailer. That's a trailer. That is a trailer right there, right? That is, uh, yeah. <laughs> that's a good trailer. It's so, it's so weird to see because we just wrapped the show on Friday, and it just feels... Really? It's, yeah, it's so, it's so intense that it's been, like, out, and we've been, like, shooting the whole... It's been, oh yeah, my goodness. crazy. I, I, and your experience uh, uh, on all the different projects you've worked on, I'm excited to talk to you about a whole bunch of stuff, but sure. let's go right here. Has, has that ever happened before, that you're kind of playing catch-up in a way, almost, filming while people are watching? I've never while? experienced that before, no. And, you know, it's like... and we we didn't know how it was going to end and it was out and people were like, I, I know people who like have seen it and would like ask me or like, but I, I was just as clueless as everyone else. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. All right. There's a lot in there I want to unpack and dig into, but before we go any further, one of the ways I love to start this show is I have a couple of minutes with you here. So I'd love to begin just very simply. Philip, how the hell are you, man? How you doing? How are you doing? <laughs> I, it's it, I, honestly, I'm I'm uh, a little overwhelmed right now. Uh, it's it's been, we just wrapped on Friday, yeah. and then um, I'm currently moving apartments today. Um, yeah. Why are you here? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but soul. it's like it's a good thing. I'm like I'm excited about my new apartment. It has like a lot of light, which is good. That's um, fantastic. But uh, yeah, and so and then I leave on Wednesday to go to Kentucky to shoot another movie. So I'm like halfway in mourning of like just Garrett yeah. Drimmer and the and the world of Braden um and excited to, to dive into this new thing. So it's wow. It's just but that's I don't know, it's life, man. I don't yeah, know. I know it is. <laughs> Look, those are all great problems to have, right? Like if you're gonna complain about For anything, sure. right? You got a lot of work going on. Yeah. You got a new place. That, that's fantastic. I have news. a new apartment. Yeah. You have a new apartment, man. <laughs> were you packing were you literally packing boxes like this weekend? Like you I, wrapped well, filming? I arrived back in New York last night, so I was packing this morning. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I'm here. God bless you, man. You know, 
I always, Bizarre. I always say to people, thank you for stopping by and finding time. But I think never has it been more true than right now. Thank you for yeah. finding time <laughs> to come and hang out with us. We'll try to keep this quick so you can get back to work. Uh, so that's awesome. Well, I'm glad you're doing well. Congratulations, not only on the show but the new place and all the fun stuff you got going on. Let's let's dial it back. Let's talk about the beginning. Then you just had to say goodbye. But but how were you introduced to Braden? How'd you come to this show? How'd you get involved, man? Uh, I had done a movie called Compliance with Craig Zobel, who is one of my favorite directors that I've ever worked with, and I would do anything for him. And um, he directed all 10 of these. And yeah, and so it, just the timing worked out where um, I was available, and I, he brought me in to meet and then audition, and I kind of fell in love with the character and, and, and the story. Yeah, talk to me about what it was that you fell in love with, and give you know for the uninitiated, for maybe yeah. if they're tuning in just now and they didn't see the trailer. What, who is Garrett, and, and and why did you fall in love with Garrett? Well, I play uh, it, so it takes place in in a Rust Belt town outside of Pittsburgh, and it, it kind of deals with like the the social and and racial and economic you know yeah. um, levels in, in in a town going through like gentrification and stuff. So it's like a dying steel mill town. I play um, like a steel mill worker on like the lowest rung job, uh, trying to raise like a, a, a two-year-old little girl and just trying to survive pretty much. And uh, and basically the story just um, every episode it tracks a dollar bill, so it it goes from the perspective of whoever has that dollar bill for that episode. Yeah. Um, so you kind of really see what it's like on all you know all aspects of a town going through a crazy change and like totally different. Exactly. Yeah. We were we were briefly talking about that in the in the green room. That's one of the things I really dug about the show is like, yes, there's this big murder mystery yeah. that's going on, but as much as it's about murder, the show's very much about class and exploring uh yeah, the Rust Belt in, in this in this time and in twenty eighteen. And I was kind of fascinated by that because you don't you don't see too much of the deep exploration of that. And that device, the one dollar thing, you see it right in the trailer. There's a perfect yeah, totally. window of it right there when the dollar gets dropped in Garrett's cup. What did you think of when you first read about that narrative device? About about that dollar floating around. What was your impression? Of I think that? it's cool. I mean, I don't think we, we think about that. Like we live amongst each other and like something like money is such an important uh, thing. And just to kind of, you know, how much we actually like share between, between each other and how, how different we all are yeah. all under like, you know, in one small environment kind of. For sure, man. Was, um, was the setting a big part of what you fell in love to? Getting yeah. to tell a story no, in this part of America, in the Rust Belt? It's amazing. Like, I, I've, I, I've never, I'd never been to Pittsburgh. I was just there for six months. And it's, it's a working class city. And it's yeah. going through a crazy change right now of gentrification. And it's, it really is a dying, uh, you know, working town where, you know, now Google and, like, all these crazy places have moved in. But, like, there's still, like, two like working steel mills left and all the other workers who like learned how to like do that they they're just trying to figure out what they're going to do now yeah it's um, kind of hard for the steel mill guy to go figure out what google needs from him like, yeah right? yeah no exactly like, God, there's no crossover yeah there, but, but a lot of like a lot of the the extras and stuff are all actual like okay. mill workers yeah and we shot in real mills yeah. and stuff it was cool yeah. So you were there for six months, man. Yeah. How much? Uh, cause what would you grow? I, I think it was when you grew up in Jersey, right? I grew up in Jersey. So this is a little was this a little different than the the environment you were used to that you yeah, come up, I mean, came up in, right? Uh, like, yeah, totally. Uh, I don't know if you could hear. There's some people doing the dialect, but it's like it's like the most fun accent. I've, yeah, I've, there I've are a couple heard. of words that yeah. stand out. So uh, that kind of ties into where I wanted to go next, was just like the level of research and preparation. Sure. Uh, and you talk about the dialect. Just get, tell me about that whole thing. You get the role. You know where you're going to be. Now you got to start looking into it. Yeah. Being out there, you get immersed. You're in Pittsburgh. Sure. But what were you doing to prepare and make Garrett authentic? Uh, I mean, just kind of like his emotional core. Uh, within the first 10 minutes of the movie, my character is pretty much in like PTSD for like the rest of the series. I won't really tell you what happens, but like, yeah, I don't know. It really helps being there. And, and also I like, I have these like amazing, cute little like two year old uh, twins that play my, this little girl that I'm raising. And that is, that you don't really have to act much when you, yeah. when you have like a two year old child in your arms. You mentioned <laughs> that uh, a lot of the extras and stuff were like legit yeah. locals and whatnot. Did you ever like take time between takes, sit down and talk to them and find out like what that was in their head and like what they think about everything that's going on in town and whatnot? Yeah, for sure. I mean, that's the thing is there's so much excitement in, in the yeah. city right now, but at the same time, it's like, 
you know, how, how gentrification anywhere. It's like it, it, it's changing for the better, but also it's like what happens to all those people. So it's it's I don't know. It's an interesting time. For sure. Yeah. I, um, <laughs> so I was watching the show and, and I'm watching the dollar bill change hands and I'm watching all these different things. And uh, one of the things that really struck out was that your character was the title. It's the title of the first episode. Yeah. That's when we follow you. Uh-huh. Were you at all concerned as you saw that your name wasn't the title of any other episode? <laughs> no, I mean... But that, that's, <laughs> like you were that's, like, oh, man, how am I going to make it to the end of page one? Like, am I... <laughs> no, I mean, that was just the plan is every episode is is a, the title, is the, the name of whoever has the yeah. dollar for that episode. It's funny, you um, guys... Oh, go on. No, it's just, it's just like such an ensemble show. Well, that's where I'm yeah. gonna go next. Is that yeah, you're the you're number one, but like the cast on this thing, and I wrote down because uh, there were so many. First of all, John Carroll Lynch, yeah, we're doing a lot with him. Leslie yeah. Odom Jr. shows up. Sturgill Simpson has his first acting role. Ashley yeah, yeah. Uh, Atkinson's amazing. Everybody in She's this great. is amazing. Uh, t- uh, talk about meeting everybody, working with them together. Yeah, and, well, like so forging a family. I did um, c- the compliance the movie with Craig. With uh, Ashley was in that with me, so I've known her for years. Sturgill is like very fun, is and it? we've had many late nights talking. Philosophically, and go uh, on, <laughs> and <laughs> just about life and other things, and amazing musician and stuff. It just, it really was like a super like tight knit family, yeah. Um, which I think was important because it, it's like we're, we have to represent such like a, a like a, a small town. Yeah, for sure. sure. Sturgill's such a cool dude. You were having so you're having late night philosophical yeah. talks with Sturgill. Yeah, Simpson. I don't know if we're <laughs> supposed, to, but but like um yeah, a lot of like whiskey. Yeah. Was was, uh, was drank and uh, I'm not surprised. A lot no, of uh, Pittsburgh, yeah. middle of steel belt. No, yeah. I mean it's also we're doing something. Just you know, it, it's so cool to like be on a set, especially like on location, and people come from all different worlds. Like Sturgill is like this incredible like musician. He's never acted before, and yeah. then you know I'm from New Jersey. There's you know Ashley's from Arkansas. Like Pete, you know it's it's just you're, you're that's so what's so fun about doing all this too is you just get to like be in these bubbles for a while and kind of like share and create this like uh, like an emotional experience um and then you know and just i don't know well it's funny you you referred to wrapping up on friday and you were saying yeah. i'm kind of still in mourning yeah and uh you know i wonder and you hear that occasionally but especially with this project you're out there for six months you bomb with these people would you say uh, you were feeling that a little more than usual because of just the nature of the ensemble and how it was or is that something you typically find yourself going through at the end i mean of the project? this one was well, I, I i've i've mostly done a lot of film yeah um and the longest jobs I've had other than that are, is from theater, but this is the first time I've done like a full uh, series of TV. And for sure, and especially when you're on location and you're just there together, um, and you know, you're just focusing on the job and then just hang out with each other. It's, and especially, it was, this was unique because we were so tight and, yeah. and, and you know, the cast, it was just really like, the, there's a lot of chemistry between us. So it was, it was super sad. And also, it's like normally, I feel like you do a, a job and then you finish and then you go into like a slight, you know, mourning or depression for, for like a, a week of just like letting it go. Or, you know, some people have different like yeah. things that they do to just like cleanse it. But yeah, so I guess I just got back and then I, and I'm like having to, you know, which is like the great thing about, you know, working too is like I'm jumping straight into like something else. So it's just like I'm like in between two characters right now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you get to you move from thing to thing. You don't have time to process the grief too much, and you're moving literally your life. Yeah. So you don't have time yeah, yeah, to I'm, process yeah, totally. any of that. Uh, yeah. I'm remarkable at how coherent a lot of these responses are. You're doing a phenomenal <laughs> job. <laughs> I'm glad. This feels like a dream right now, kind of. <laughs> With everything you yeah. got going on, you're crushing it. Um, <laughs> you know, we talked about Sturgill, of course. Leslie Odom Jr. is yeah. here as well too. And you mentioned the longest job you had was on stage. I wonder yeah. all these different disciplines coming together and, and what sort of that that was like and everybody bringing their different expertise and their different experience to it. Sure. Were you guys all learning from one another? Yeah, I mean, it was stuff? fun is because almost everyone in the cast has, like, a theater background. Yeah. So that just is, like, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's just a different beast. And it's just it's cool to, like, you know, work with people who, like, you know, come from similar experiences and stuff. Is there something, uh, because it is such a different beast, but is there something that either you miss or something that you kind of try to bring with you, a certain type of energy? Obviously, you have to calibrate your performance because yeah. it's a different venue. Yeah, I mean, it, it's cool. It, like, makes you stay true. Like, I don't know, even being in front of, like, people right now, it's just, like, in the moment, and it, the moment is a moment, and then it just 
is yeah. is gone. Um, and there's something about being on stage where you know, you know, I, you, you, you do like a joke one time it gets a laugh and then you do it again and again the third time like it no longer gets a laugh yeah. because you're like anticipating the joke and then you have to like refine the impulse for the joke to begin with so it's just like constantly keeping you in the moment in a way um is that when you you were doing uh, bad jews right? i did bad jews you yeah were in bad jews for a little while yeah and how long were you in the show uh we did that uh on and off for two years wow i yeah. realized it was two years yeah it was yeah Oh, man. All right, so, so hang on. Yeah, let's get into that. So that's the longest you've spent with a character. For sure, yeah. Uh, talk about having to say goodbye at the end of two years. That yeah. That was brutal. Yeah, that yeah, was... Let's reopen that, that one. That was really sad. And it's <laughs> funny, too, because I feel like I played this character named Jonah in that, and um, I definitely have, like, uh, embodied some physicalities. Yeah. It just gets, like, ingrained inside of you. It's just funny what you pick up from every different, like, thing that you do. Do you, are um, you when you uh, when you say you pick up things from everything yeah. that you do? Are you aware of that in the moment, or is it something that no, you only find just after? Like, yeah, just like afterwards, I feel like you're just a culmination. I'm I'm interested to be see what I'm going to be like in like five years from now, based on like who knows where I'm going to be, who I'm going to be playing. But it's like you know, I don't know. You go through like different. The only way I, I can do it is like you kind of like approach certain work, and it, it approaches you. And then, you know, I, I'm just, I just say yes to, like, my impulse, and it leads me down. Like, I've, I've had years where I've played, like, like stoner, like, yeah. comedic roles, and then I went down, like, a kind of psycho murder path for a little bit. <laughs> um, and it's funny because it's, like, I, like, I, I kind of got really dark uh, culminating in, I, I did that movie, First Reforms, yeah, that First came Reforms. out this past year, um, which was a very deep and dark um, story and character and stuff and and now i almost feel like with garrett drimmer it's like on the way out of that into like some hope maybe yeah you're kind <laughs> like of segue 100 yeah. yeah i mean i haven't seen all the episodes but from what i've seen yeah. like you definitely there's a, a bit of a redemption arc that you're building there um all right i gotta go to the audience in a second but you bring up you know you're curious to see where you are in five years one sure. of the things i wanted to ask you about like most East Coast uh, actors who get their start, sure. one of your first gigs was Law & Order SVU. It was, yeah. Like... I, I, played a, I played this uh, kid who, um, he cut a guy's balls off and he set him on fire. <laughs> and he can, That yeah, show yeah. knows how to go to yeah. 11, doesn't it? Yeah. You... And I oh had, my God. I, and I, I got to scream, like, that's why I cut his balls off. I remember that was like, that was, that was my first, uh, that was my that's first job. your first freaking gig. Yeah. <laughs> that, like, sets the tone for just your just entire like, oh, career. I was I like, guess, oh, right, man. I guess we're, we're Where do I this go now. from here? Yeah. So, hang yeah. on. I, I mean, I guess you answered it. I was going to ask you, like, do you remember the magic of the set? Or, like, the first time you walked on? I was like, no. <laughs> the, the answer to that story is you got to scream. That's why I cut your balls off and lit them on fire. Huh? Yeah. That's the whole story. That's, that is the story. God yeah. damn. I, I got to end it there. I got to go to the audience. <laughs> sure. I, I don't know what else to do. All right. So, we got <laughs> microphones in the room. Uh, first question's right here. Hi. Um, I was wondering, since uh, this show has a very... Uh, uh, crazy concept I, I wanted to know um what was the cra uh, craziest thing you've ever done for a dollar or the oh, most or the or the most absurd places that you found a dollar at i've i've twice um like walked past something that i thought i saw on the street and like walked like two blocks and then turned around and walked back and found three hundred dollars on the floor in cash that moved me twice once in london and once in brooklyn yeah, and both times three hundred dollars in cash. Like three even. Yeah, yeah. I don't. <laughs> I swear, it's a true story. <laughs> yeah. Were they in a money clip? Was it the same amount of no, bills? No, no. It was, was it like bills folded. Actually, in London, it was on the Millennium Bridge, and it, there was it was like shoved in like in the grates of the bridge, and I walked the whole bridge, got to St. Paul's, and then I'm like, I think I saw something, and I walked all the way back. Also, what's so crazy is in Pittsburgh, I, like, was at a grocery store, and I, like, left and I walked home, and then I walked back because I remember seeing a scratch-off lottery machine, no. and I bought a ticket, and it, it won $700. So it's, it's just very bizarre. I, I need to follow my impulse. And, yeah. And it happened to me in Roulette one time, too, in Vegas. I, <laughs> I, was, I was doing blackjack. And then I like stopped, took all my money and put it on 18 on roulette. And, and the guy was like, are you sure you want to do all on that? I'm like, sure. And then it hit 18. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. I, I don't know. I, I'm just like remembering all this Can stuff now. 
<laughs> I, I immediately feel less guilty about pulling you away mid move. I, I just want you to know that. That's the it's universe evening things out and just being like, well, we gave him all that free money. We might as well yeah. make him do press while he's got to fucking move. That's what we're going to do. That's incredible. Any more before we move on to the next question? Any more instances of not that I crazy? Could, not, not that I can remember. That yeah. is wild. We're buying a lottery ticket, you and I, as soon as we get out of here. You yeah, know that? Sure, sure. It's the first thing we're friggin' doing. All right, I got, I got two more. Next question is, I'm looking for the microphone right here, green couch. So, first of all, you're a very lucky man. <laughs> no, I, I, it's, yeah. I've also had a lot of unluck, too. Yeah, and so, right. yeah, I just, these are, yeah. Well, <laughs> but, I yeah. wanted to know, um, how has your, you know, you, how have you evolved as an actor from your first film and, until now and what techniques have you gained since then uh i think i don't know i I feel like embracing my own fear and insecurities and like trying to like i'm constantly trying to like redefine my purpose for doing this and i think the more specific i believe this you are in the universe and what you're looking for or the kind of work that you're trying to do the more opportunities come your way in, in a way or like i don't know the so I've, I've been trying to just kind of like be myself and also lead with an open heart and, and vulnerability because I, I, I'm a sensitive person and awkward sometimes and feel strange. And before, when I first started, I would try to like think I needed to be something else. And the more I could just embrace like my own insecurities and just lead with that and like, and this is who I am. And I like, I, I feel things and I'm, you know, and, and I don't know how to do things sometimes and that feel awkward, the more I almost like took that power back and then I started working a lot more too. And like, I, I found it's a strength too. If I can just like open my heart in front of the camera as much as possible and look in the actor's eyes, it just like defeats all of the, the other stuff that's like just noise around it in a way. Thank you for that. Yeah. That was a great question, a fantastic response. Thanks for that. All right, what we got? We're gonna do one more? All right, we've got one more coming to us right Hi. here. Um, so you've had like a lot of opportunities in like acting and like theater, um, but I would like to pose a hypothetical. Sure. Um, if you weren't an actor, what do you think you would be doing, or like what job would you like to have most? Interesting. Um, I mean, maybe like a a psychologist or something. Um, yeah, for sure. I'm just so I'm so fascinated, or a therapist. Like I, I'm. Uh, I'm just so fascinated in like uh, human nature and like, you know, why people do what they do and, and what causes those impulses and like, you know, and our, our subtext also is so funny because when you like read a script, characters will be saying something, but then it's like usually we say like the opposite of what we mean or like we're trying to like cover for something else. So yeah. you like break it down on the page and then there's so much subtext to every scene and it's just so funny that like, you know, I, I almost end up doing that in my normal life too, just with the people around me. I think it helps to like release any friction. And I feel like if we just did that and try to understand each other more, there'd be less problems in the world. That's a great response. And yeah. uh, it's really interesting too, like, cause yeah, very much a part of what you do is, is getting into these fictional people and figuring out those, asking those questions totally. and finding those things. And, he's, and, but I feel like in real life, we it's just applicable. like kind of just take people and like, don't see them as like human beings, which leads back to the show too, is like, I play a steel mill worker. There's someone who's like a real estate mogul in the show. And like, we're, we both are dealing with stuff yeah. and like, and it's like, it's just that you, you, sometimes you can't see it on the other side, but we're all human beings just trying to survive in a way. Yeah, man. Everybody's story is different. Everybody's yeah. journey is valid. And that, this show does a great job at illustrating that. Uh, the, the $1 is a really cool device through which we get to see that. Uh, and I said at the beginning, let's say it again. Congratulations, man, because it's not Thanks, easy to make man. good television. You guys did a really good job. Uh, we're going to uh, we gotta wrap things up. We're just about out of time, so you got to go back and move some more boxes yeah, yeah, yeah. let's go to the next thing <laughs> but um uh genuinely i, I want to sincerely thank you for for coming and hanging out with us man it was really nice to have you here and i had a lot of fun with you i hope you Thanks. had a good time with us i did yeah this uh, is great I, it break. doesn't sound like you need it but i wish you the best of luck <laughs> and uh everybody please put your hands together as we we thank philip here it's cbs all access new episodes every thursday philip edinger everybody please right here thank there you he guys is. right here <laughs>